approach this from a mindset standpoint when there's really not much to play for, or anything to play for from a playoff standpoint? Um, same, same way we treat every game, we treat every practice, uh, com, you know, compete. End of the day, this is our job. We're competitors. Like you said, obviously the playoffs is out of the question, but at the end of the day, there's still a lot of more, you know, more things we can do out there. Um, so, uh, just compete. You said after the game, I think that, you know, you have the talent to be in the playoffs. How much more disappointing does that make it that you think you guys are good enough, but aren't going to be there for the second three years? Uh, super disappointing. Um, you know, like I said, on paper, we have a, a very, very talented roster, but obviously we weren't able to put everything together this season uh, for the second straight year, so um, it's definitely frustrating. Why do you think the on-paper didn't translate as well on the field? I couldn't tell you. Um, it just didn't, you know, just didn't work out. Greg, you mentioned after the game about early in the season, the secondary not being on the same page. How much of that, you guys went through training camp in the preseason, it seemed like, if it wasn't you, it was Denzel or somebody else kind of battling through some injuries, not being on the field. How much of that do you think maybe played into a little bit of that not being on the, you know, that cohesion, early season cohesion? Um, I don't think that has anything to do with it. Uh, do with it. It's just more so communication, and I feel like we fixed that uh, along the season. It's not necessarily not knowing where people, it's just communication. It's coverage bus is not nothing that's, you know, with playing with each other, that's just not communicating back and forth. So that was the problem. Are you bracing yourself for possible staff changes on the defense, like Joe Woods possibly you know, getting fired and you guys having upheaval in the offseason? Uh, that's above my pay grade, so I kind of don't look at any of that stuff. Like, we still got two more games, so I'm really focused on that. You know, whatever happens with anything else, you know, I have no clue what's going to happen. So. Um, I kind of just focus on that, and I allow the you know higher ups to make those decisions. You, you're sort of bouncing back and forth this year between slot and outside. Um, is, is that a role you'd like to continue in? Uh, uh, for sure, um, it's definitely something I would like to continue in. Um, like you said it's difficult, especially going from outside to inside. Um, I like playing outside too, so I mean it's definitely a role that I would like to have. But you know more so, I feel like I would like to have it more on a more matchup. Base instead of just having me, you know, just be inside the whole time. So, uh, yeah, that's something that I'm kind of going to work through. So, so you kind of prefer, like, maybe follow somebody or, or something like that? Uh, not even necessarily. Not even necessarily follow. Um, it's just, you know, I just feel like certain games, there's, you know, there's a time and place for everything. So I feel like that's What's what it is. What's the difference between Carson and Heineke? Uh, Heineke's that, you know, play action type of quarterback, uh, smaller guy. So he's, that play action type of dude. He can really throw the deep ball very well. Um, he's an improviser, so he's kind of like that Russell Wilson where a lot of stuff breaks down and he's able to use his legs, you know, to um, make stuff happen. And then Carson Wentz, obviously big arm, strong arm guy, straight just drop back type of guy. Not really, as I say, that play action pass type of dude. So, um, yeah, they're, they're both very good quarterbacks, but you can tell when, when one when when one is in versus the other, like the offense is gonna be a little bit different. So you prepare for one obviously after what Ron Rivera said this morning, right? You gotta prepare for both. Just no matter what. I mean, especially uh, you know, a quarterback situation where it's not necessarily stable, you don't really know who's gonna play, so you always gotta, you know, prepare for both. As you move forward, do you see opportunities for yourself to play more outside? I mean with Denzel and Martin and yeah, yeah. you do have the skills to Play in the slot. So, can you move more outside? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I feel like the, with the talent we have in that room, uh, you know, we got a lot of options and things like that. But, you know, right now I'm just focused on finishing this season. And then obviously that's talks that can be had at the end of the season to find ways to, you know, kind of incorporate everybody. So, uh, that's something that we'll do. Hey, Greg, despite falling short in the playoffs, do you feel like progress has been made? For sure. Um, you know, I feel like as a unit, especially as a defensive unit, I feel like we've been, you know, gelling together these second half of the season. I kind of feel like that's what kind of happened last year, too. I feel like the second half of last year is when we finally hit our stride. Um, and I feel like as a defense, I feel like we've been doing a, you know, amazing job and just staying together, competing. And I feel like we've been competing these last few weeks. Considering, like, there was so much carryover from last year's defense to this year's defense, I guess looking back at those early games where you guys struggled, like, was it kind of surprising that it was kind of like a repeat of last year in a sense? And, and For sure. 
for sure. It's, de it's definitely like frustrating, especially like when you end a season on a high note. Obviously, we didn't get to the playoffs, but you know, as a defense, we were balling out the last year. So our goal was to come in, you know, the, this year on the same, you know, high note that we that we ended last season. So it was definitely frustrating, uh, you know, to start off slow again. We had a lot of like one score games, so you know, had us been hot right away, uh, we could be having a completely different conversation right now. Is, is there something you guys can do different? I mean, I know everybody showed up in the spring and you, know, you guys were, were ready to go in training camp. Is there something you can do differently this offseason or that you have to consider so, so you don't start slow again? Yeah, I, I think it's just come in with that, you know, that, that fire. Like, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where, you know, every game is a must win. Like, you want to have some of those games towards the end of the season where, you know, you lose and you're just not out of it. So I think it's just like starting off with that fire, that mentality, like that underdog mentality, you know, right away um, in the beginning of the season. Even before the, the uh, offseason, is there value to these last two games in order to, you know, get that, keep it rolling and, and get the most out of this season? So you might not start so difficult, have that difficulty in the start of the season next year? For sure. It's a lot. Of, it's a ton of value. First of all, you know, these last two games, you're going to see who the true competitors are. Um, you know, when, when, when you're not playing for a playoff spot and, you know, you see guys still out there flying around, giving it their all, like, those are the guys that you want to be around. Those are the guys you want to play around. Um, and obviously, the core is set here. Like, we got a few core guys that you know, you know, will be here. Obviously, NFL rosters change all the time. So, us core guys, you know, will be here. Um, and, you know, we obviously want to change stuff for next season. So, these two, these last two games are very important. Is there anything to, I mean, you guys are eight, nine last year. So you wanted to finish the same and not take a step back record-wise. Is there anything to that, yeah. needing to win the last two games to get there? Uh, yeah. I mean, I just feel like as a competitor, like, I don't want to lose. I'm not even necessarily – if we only won two games this season, it will be the same way. Like, those last two are must win. I just feel like as competitors, like, I hate losing. So um, I feel like the, that's kind of how everyone is in this locker room as well. And what makes McLaurin so good? Uh, three level route runner, and he's very strong too. Um, but he's also very fast, so like he can, he can run the whole entire route tree. Can you stand up for the Big Ten with your SEC teammates? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some battles. Nah, yeah, that, I think the Big Ten is still the best. I mean, SEC got those, you know, powerhouses, but as a whole, I'm a Big Ten guy for sure.